how you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday over here in the Atlantic. One main feature, Tropical Storm Arlene over here in the Bay of Campeche, the first name stormed of the 2011 Atlantic hurricane season, officially welcoming it in the season here in the end of June. And we can see it spinning away over here. We've had a lot of convective increase since last night. It was a very broad center with no convection last night. It has since fixed that up. We now have a lot more deep convection firing near the center. And we're starting to get a little bit more of an organized core structure in here. Recon are not finding very strong winds yet. I'm not sure if the NHC will up this from 40 miles per hour sustained winds at 11 a.m but it is starting to get better organized and will continue to strengthen slowly before landfall. Um, a first guess at the surface center may be tempted to say somewhere in here on the satellite with this last image, but in reality it's back here a little bit as you can see on the recon as it came through. You can see the visible. It's actually right back here, a little bit to the southwest of the center of the convective mass, and I would even go so far to say is that this is slightly decoupled with the mid-level center up in here and the low-level center a little bit to the southwest of the mid-level center, and the recon may comment on that, whether they get up that high to see I'm not sure they may stay flying too low to catch that if it does exist but it's possible that this is a little bit disorganized in terms of its vertical structure and it's not completely stacked but regardless it's not going to be blowing up into a monster here it's going to be moving in just south of Tampico as I said Tampico is a good landfall location for this it looks like it is going in near that area perhaps just south of based on the NHC forecast and the models and this will be mainly a rainfall threat folks should be worried about gusty winds near the coastline, of course, but the main issue with this will be heavy rainfall and potential flash flooding in areas in Mexico, despite the fact that they really do need the rain over most of the country. This will be a relief for a lot of farmers, but along the coast, be wary as these things can cause some problems no matter how weak they really are. Uh, here on the water vapor, we can see a little bit of dry air still to the northwest of the system, pressing down on it a little bit, but wind shear has lessened tremendously. As I've been mentioning, this upper low started to back away, and upper ridging has been able to balloon a little bit more over this, with the upper low over the central Caribbean helping to ventilate it on the eastern side, and this trough backing away has allowed uh, this area to become very nicely ventilated. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than what it was, and it's got a nice upper anticyclone over the general region, and uh, this has been what has allowed it to start to get going since yesterday. Here are the models, as I mentioned. Oops, this isn't scrolled over. I apologize. Here is the NHC forecast, taking it right in the middle of the model pack, right south of Tampico in here. The ECMWF, the European last night, kept uh, insisting that it comes a little bit further north in here, north of Tampico. I don't think I believe that. I'd go with the rest of the models here coming in just south of the city. Uh, not that it matters a whole lot here, but it will be coming in here and moving west-southwest across the entire country, hopefully bringing a nice swath of rainfall, a nice large swath over this uh, central part of the country as the system is very broad as we can see in here it was monsoonal in nature in its formation which is also what has caused it to develop slowly and is also why it won't bomb out very fast uh, right before landfall it is possible that we get this up to moderate tropical storm strength before landfall. You can see with the convection now forming into a structure, if this can become vertically stacked, if it is indeed decoupled, if we can get it vertically stacked in the final 12 hours before landfall, it's got 18 to 24 before landfall right now. If we can get, can get that structure tightened up, we may be able to get this center to wind up to higher winds before landfall. The NHC had it up to 60 miles per hour. That is still possible if this tightens up. For right now, the center is still fairly broad. I think we can see on this image with the recon, yeah, you can see that the area of winds around the center is fairly broad and light. The tropical storm force do not appear until you get fairly far out in here. These pink colors show tropical storm force winds, 40 knots. Well removed from the center, the rest of this stuff is fairly broad in here. So until we get that center really tightened up, we're not going to get it to explode. The pressure is down to 1,000 millibars, so we could easily see this up to 50 miles per hour by the next advisory. Probably not this advisory, I'm guessing, but the next one may see it up to 50 miles per hour, and we'll have the plane in there for a few more hours, so we'll get some more details on this as they come in. And looking ahead of Arlene right now, the models are still in agreement that the MJO is going to continue to stay over this area of the world. In fact, the GFS and the UK Met are getting fairly aggressive with the phase strength in octants 8 and 1. 
over the next couple of weeks and the GFS here shows the upward motion staying over the Atlantic through days 10 to 15 and that means we'll continue to have to watch the Caribbean and perhaps the Gulf of Mexico for potential mischief as we head through the first 10 days of July or so and uh, this pattern is fairly progressive in terms of the upper level features in the tropics where we're going to have is what the models are hinting at we have an upper ridge associated with our lean we have an upper trough behind that and then we have another ridge that's going to develop on the other side of this amplified trough so for example as this ridge moves off with our lean, this trough will move west, and so will this ridge, and we'll have to follow that ridge to see if any mischief develops behind it. You can see that it tends to support showers and amplification of tropical waves in its area, and uh, another trough is forecasted by the GFS to form behind that, so we're going to be watching for these pulses of upward motion coming through the Caribbean associated with upper level features that may spark um, certain kinds of mischief. The models have also hinted at a trough split off the east coast that brings something into the Gulf and then brings it up into the central Gulf Coast. Not sure I really believe um, that right now, but of course trough splits should always be watched for mischief as well. So we will have a couple of opportunities for further mischief if this MJO poll stays as strong as the models say over the next couple of weeks. So we will be continuing to watch for our next name storm to perhaps show its face at some point. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.